Welcome to the Deeper Dive. We have the full team here. It's been a couple of weeks, actually, since we have done anything. Just kind of made it through the Christmas break. So I'm here with all uh, all four of us guys. By the way, how was uh, Christmas break for you guys? It was great. It's good to be awesome. back in Colorado with some family and having some fun. Busy and tiring, but but also fun. Where'd Thank you go, you, in Colorado? Matthew? P- Puebla? Uh, so I was in Colorado Springs, which is where my wife's family is, and then what's called the San Luis Valley, where my family is. That sounds nice. Yeah, it was. I've never been, never really been there. So Just check it out. Okay, I'll put it on my list. Check I'll out f- Pueblo while you're there. Buy some green chili. Did you get out of Did you get out of P Town, Brooks? I did. did. Aspen. I did. Did I this time? No. I heard Aspen is where I've the been there many times though. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Movie quote. Sorry. Yeah. 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 There we go. Um, if you either you get it or you don't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did get out of P-Town. We went on Christmas Day over the mountain pass on I-90, and um, thank you to everyone who was praying for it. Like, I felt like everybody in Prosser heard, you're going over to the west side? Oh, we'll pray for you. Because it was closed. Like, the pass was closed yeah. all Christmas mm-hmm. Eve, yeah, and then yeah. Christmas Day, like, we're just like, okay, we're, we left before the pass was open. Or like, we're just going to, yeah. we're either going to be camp, camping in <laughs> Glealum, or we're getting over, but we got over. Yeah. yeah. Adam, you had a good break too, didn't you? Yeah, I think we were actually driving. I don't think I think our wives were texting, but I was. We yes. were driving to Portland while you were driving to Seattle, and we mm. got freezing rain the whole way. So yeah, it was like a third inch of sketchy man. freezing rain on the car by the time we got to Hood River. But we got it through. I white knuckled it, drove yeah. slow and safe, and we spent some time with my parents, and then cleaned. I think I've told you guys I went through all my grandpa's files, and I went from yeah. eleven big totes to one. So grandpa. Pastor. Preacher grandpa, Pastor, yeah. So yeah. got all his sermons, but our garage is cleaner. Actually, it's clean. It's a lot yeah. of space. Happy yeah. family because of that. And it was good for my soul to go through that stuff. Yeah, that's so really that cool. Good. Yeah, and we cleaned out my grandpa's place. We were getting rid of whiskey bottles. So a little bit different. <laughs> a little bit different. Family, so, uh, <laughs> you were less likely to save those than Adam. Yes, we did not save sermons. those. So, Well, guys, uh, a couple of announcements. A couple of announcements. Couple wait, of wait, ones. hold on, hold on. How was your break? Yeah, yes. was oh, okay. Uh, my break was good, other than the fact that uh, after all this time, none of us, nobody in our family had ever gotten COVID. Yeah, my wife and I, Joy actually got it first on like the twentieth. Oh no! I got it the next day. <laughs> I felt fine through the whole thing. Joy was dying, hmm. so we <clears throat> basically postponed Christmas until uh, like the end of January. Dude, Whatever. I did not know that you got COVID, huh? Yeah, I finally got the COVID, man. You're yeah. the last person in America to get. I think it. so. I didn't have any symptoms. I was just I tested positive. So anyway, well, you're a positive right. guy. Well, that's it. Okay, so two announcements. Number one, this is our, that is the Deeper Dives, 100th episode. <sighs> the crowd yeah. goes wild. Woo! We made it. Yeah, 100. Can you believe Triple that? Digits. Triple digits. That really is amazing. Wow. So I don't know what year we started that. I think in. we started in September of 2020. 2020. 2020, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's the first announcement. Let's just, just put a couple tar- cards right on the table here. So this is our 100th, uh, 100th episode, and uh, this is also our Finney flight. This is the last deeper dive that we'll do. We have decided to uh, give our, kind of just put our efforts toward something else and felt like this had kind of run its course, having started just right after COVID, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, no, I mean, during, we had just come back from the summer where we were meeting out in the tent, and all coming back, opening the campuses back up in September. And Jason Jason led the charge on the Anchor Daily with, with his team, the Anchor Daily and the Deeper Dive, and just a way to give our congregation more ways to engage in the Word um, while they were facing isolation. And so yeah. we, we started in this room with, I think it was you, me, and Jason for a few weeks. Brooks was just a few weeks later when he came on board and ran for... Yeah, two years, a little over, actually two and a half almost. Okay, that is really good. So why don't we just, you know, for this, on this last episode here or whatever, the deeper dive, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the last two years, yeah. see what we can learn from it. And so you've kind of got us got us started, but if we were to ask, how do, how do we start this? You already got part of it, mm-hmm. Adam, that it was really Jason's idea. 
uh, to start. Mm -hmm. And the, the primary, what was the, the primary motivation, motivator for starting this? Discipleship. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Discipleship. Everything, uh, everything that Jason does for sure. And, and, and I would say, Adam and Dawson, you definitely carry on this legacy of let's look through the lens of discipleship. Are we making disciples? And COVID, like everyone knows, uh, turned our world upside down and it just mm -hmm. upended everything. And along with that, I would say everything that came with COVID wasn't all bad. Mm -hmm. like, like, you know, like you can now order food from any single restaurant to your door because mm -hmm. of COVID like, like yeah. that, right. Is that, that uh, just, it just pushed our, pushed the world forward a little bit or opened up new possibilities, I think. And one of the things that came out too was pod podcast, right? Yeah. So they, the church said we need to make disciples and we need to have uh, a, a different Avenue to make disciples as kind of people's landscape have changed a little bit. They're maybe at home a little bit longer. They're mm -hmm. trying to not consume just hours and hours of Netflix. They want other stuff to consume. So let's give them some, something to consume. So yeah. that, I think that's where it came out of is just because the landscape had changed with COVID, we took advantage of that and said, let's, yeah. let's make a podcast. And, and it was, and still I think continues to be pretty successful. Yeah. yeah. And it's alongside the Anchor Daily, which we are continuing. Yeah. And Anchor Daily was that daily devotional to keep people in the word and reflecting and praying. And then this was supposed to be that once a week. And I think was just that deeper dive for people that want to go deeper into the message on Sunday. So I think, yeah, the, the ideal or the hope was just to get not just content for content's sake, but stuff for our body to be able to eat and feed on and create conversation and growth and transformation. Mm -hmm. So what is, if you guys mind, let's just be honest on this, what have been some of the feedback that we've all gotten, that you've gotten um, regarding the deeper dive? What, 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 have, what, have, what have you heard from people? I, mean, I think one of the things that I just heard from people inside our church is they just enjoyed the opportunity to see us as pastors being relational, mm -hmm. joking around, dropping a movie quote, whatever, laughing. Um, Cause you'll always see that stuff, right? Like, you, you know, if you're on your campus, you see each individual pastor, you, you know, they're there, but like, what, what does that group look like together? Is there unity? Are they sharing anything? Do they, do they like each other? <laughs> do they like each other? Um, some people have enjoyed that that window into some of the relational stuff that goes on that you just don't see mm -hmm. unless you're there. Yeah, and, and along those lines, I've heard people say it's been neat for them not just to see the relationships, but also to get to know the mm -hmm. different pastors at different campuses um, because you usually are interacting with one of them and you know, we've got all these campus pastors and a senior pastor, but we don't really know them. And this gives an inside scoop into how each of us are wired differently and what we enjoy mm -hmm. and how we engage with each other and... I just heard people appreciate that. Someone told me one time uh, when I filled in for you, Dave, that I was a really good host. So that was nice. I heard that too. Yeah. Someone patted me on the back. So that yeah. was pretty cool. I heard that with your <laughs> wife said that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and my grandma and my mom. Yeah. Yep. It doesn't make it not true, Dave. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. So what benefit has the deeper dive been for you guys? Oh man. So it's funny when I started at Bethel, I think it was the first week of September, 2020 right before this got launched. So when I took the job, I had no idea that this was a part of the job to sit in front of a microphone and record a podcast. I had never done it before and it was pretty intimidating for me. And then I remember that same week, it was like, hey, we need you to record like a video for something. I'm like, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, no, we, after the deeper dive, we stopped and then the guys came in and recorded like an announcement and mm. I, terrified. Still mm. to this day, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Mm. Um, so I was really terrified and I think one thing it's helped is just to, I don't know if you guys can relate, just more opportunities to learn how to think on your feet and have a conversation and live in that digital sphere. That's been good. But pretty quickly, I was realizing that before I came to Bethel, I worked at a smaller church and there was two of us on staff and we were, we were preaching, like switching off. And we weren't really talking about our messages during that week. So if it was my week, I was in the text, I was studying it, praying through it, writing a sermon. The next week he did the same thing. And so you're kind of writing your messages in a silo, with your commentaries of alive and dead people and the Holy spirit. And then we got into this room and we'd be talking about the week coming up and all of a sudden I'm hearing your thoughts and your thoughts and Jason's thoughts and then your thoughts mm -hmm. on this text. And I, I found myself after this conversation, conversation encouraged, but also the way I was thinking about the text was expanded tremendously yeah. where I'd leave. And I'm like, 
what we just did in 30 minutes was worth hours of my own personal study. Actually, the, the perspectives I got from the guys, from you guys, was stuff I probably wouldn't have even seen with four or five hours mm -hmm. to, to try and see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my sermon writing and just my 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 week of living in the text changed. And it's mm -hmm. been that way ever since. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it feels like a cheat. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. am I plagiarizing these guys? But it'd be like, oh man, I just got a big idea that wasn't in my mind. So it's yeah. been, mm -hmm. it has helped my preaching so much and just my, my understanding of seeing the text through lots of different eyes. Yeah. And I think that anybody that goes to Bethel needs to just realize the value and the gift that Bethel has with the preaching team. Like most churches have a guy, maybe two that are preaching. And like you just explained, Adam, oftentimes that doesn't necessarily mean that they're bouncing ideas off each other or they're getting mutual encouragement yeah. from each other. The fact that Beth Bethel is insanely blessed that we have a team and, and, that camaraderie where you where we dive into the text together doesn't just happen because we do the deeper dive. It right. happens now that's built into our yeah our rhythm. So yeah, people, uh, people might be asking like, so are you guys not going to do that anymore? And the reality is that we we meet at least once a week, but once a week together, and we talk about a lot of stuff. Ninety five percent of stuff is ministry. We do talk about you know our lives, but also things that are just random. Seahawks. But we, the Seahawks, yeah, um, or the Broncos because of Matthew. Why do you got to bring that up? Jeez. <laughs> but we also time. talk, we plan out the sermon series and we talk about the text. And so we'll have those opportunities, just not in this in this mm -hmm. venue. Sorry. If I could, no, just reflect on what you guys just said. If I could like pull back, zoom back, you know, mm -hmm. I would say from what you just said, Brooks, there is a spirit of uh, collaboration and cooperation. So there's no competition really unless there's maybe a little healthy competition, right? Just between the, between the various congregations, there's no competition as to who's the better preacher. Uh, pretty much because we know it's me. It's, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there was no competition. <laughs> we, were, we all started so far behind. <laughs> Uh, you know, there, there's well, the, when you've been preaching for like what 80 years now, uh, pretty much, awesome. yeah. like that's, I mean, exactly. Get a lot more reps. I mean, wait, so if you really, you know, I know this is a total uh, cliche, but if you don't, care who gets the credit it's amazing what you can get done mm -hmm. yeah. you know you can man you can listen to other people's take on a certain scripture and as long as you're like look what we're trying to do is bring out the truth the best we can yeah then man it's it's like we all win when we don't compete we right. collaborate yeah yeah so uh, having been on this the least of anybody but here just be a couple things and and my brief time on this that like i've taken away that has been encouraging to me one has been the value of a good question. Mm -hmm. And I'm just telling you, no one asks better questions mm -hmm. than Dave Dawson. Mm -hmm. What a gift, man. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it, It's amazing. Time and time again, we'll even be talking about, okay, what's the angle we're going to take? And just, man, you find those questions, you keep them coming, and like that stirs the conversation. So one thing I was just looking at the deeper dive, I was like, I need to be a better question asker. Mm -hmm. Um, and Brooks when he hosted a couple times, great question. Oh, and, 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 and Brooks <laughs> obviously Thank crushed you. it. There's no doubt. No my doubt. apologies. Let me add my vote of favor along <laughs> with your wife and your grandmother. Yes, yes. I approve. So th that's been one thing, man. Um, yeah. Like that has challenged me. I'm like, whoa, I need to grow in that. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> because when you ask great questions, like man, that's where that magic happens, where we mm. can actually learn from the text. That's really cool. I, I think we all can feel our deficiencies when you're together. Even mm. you're talking about a theological subject. But it's almost like it, your deficiencies or your lack in a certain area is revealed. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm like, hey, that's a good thing. Because then you can tap into somebody else's strengths, right? Oh, yeah. So, well, okay. So if we are going to, we, we feel like um, the deeper dive has reached its level of effectiveness and maybe we're going to go into something else. Um, so why are we cutting this then? I mean, if it really is enjoyable for us, there's benefit to us, benefit to others. Let's just, you know, in the spirit of the transparency that yeah. you're trying to lead us into, Adam, yeah. in our whole church, why are we cutting this then? Well, I mean, I think before answering that question, just stating the fact that this has been through a number of different hands and drivers, but in our recent past, Andrew has been in charge of this. Andrew Gross and has done a fantastic job with the audio piece and then adding the, the uh, video piece for YouTube and kind of resetting the room. So... He's done a great job, and I, I think we have listeners, and we've appreciated that you have listened or watched or however you tune into this. Um, so we recognize the what has come out of this and the fruit that's come out of it and that it's good, but we're also 
we're just in a season and it's not just Bethel. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're in a season with a lot of churches of asking, okay, like who are we and what, what resources do we have and how do we channel those to accomplish our mission? Uh, and here, right. Making disciples. This, this is a part of that mission, but what we want to do is channel people's time that goes into putting this on editing it, all that goes into making this to channel those efforts in other places for the sake of the mission of making disciples. So it's not that this is bad or that it hasn't made disciples. We just feel like we want to channel resources to have a greater impact and a greater reach. And so it's not just in this area. We're just thinking as a church in general, as you're probably thinking about in your lives, like how do we adjust and right size and um, reorganize our lives to, to be who we need to be for this next season. And so this is one of those things that we're just saying, Hey, this is good. It's been fun. Like I enjoy it. Um, but we're going to use, we're going to use some of our time, in some different places. And yeah, I don't know if you guys want to add to that at all. Yeah, I do think there tends to be when, when something at its time has ended, right. Mm -hmm. And like seasons change, like for a lot of times, a lot of things, not even just podcast, whatever, then we like, well, what was, was it valuable or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it served its purpose right. at the time that it was designed to serve it for. Mm -hmm. And just cause something ends doesn't mean like that wasn't time well spent for sure seasons yeah. change and you're going to adjust things accordingly. Like that's how it should be. Yeah. And I, I think that think one of the things I would add to that is our values have not changed. Mm -hmm. Really our goals have not changed. I mean, a podcast is a, is a strategy, right? It is a strategy. The fact that we're not going to be doing the deeper dive. Does that mean all of a sudden, Oh, we don't like each other. No, <laughs> right. No. All right. We're not going to collaborate. We're not going to, mm -hmm. no, no, no. We're going to continue on. Right. So there, the, we actually don't know they're, what could happen in the near future, right? Mm, yeah. As right. to, you know, some strategies we'd follow to, to do what? To make disciples, yeah. to help make strong people, to do everything we can to build uh, the truth into people, which mm -hmm. is what really what we're really trying to, that's what we're all about at our, at our church. Right. Well, mm -hmm. and like the hope is too, right? That with, with uh, our other podcast, with the Anchor Daily, mm -hmm. that that's going to continue on a lot of those things that people like mm -hmm. seeing. Um, Kind of changing the format a little bit, thinking about doing some some like bonus episodes, yeah. um, and so our our team hopes to do some of those as well. Mm -hmm. Like we have other venues yeah. to do the same thing that we're doing, and we want to make sure that we're also properly yeah. investing in those. Yeah, so you can look out. We don't know when those will happen, but our hope yeah. is to be, to drop in the Anchor Daily. But the Anchor Daily is another example of um, we're we're going from five a week to three a week um, because we found that those three times a week are the highest listener rates, and people typically listen to about three average. And the Anchor Daily has been, there's a, a pretty high listenership. And so we're, we're leaning into that a little bit more, dialing it back to three, continuing to let people grow in their gifts of teaching. But it gives us more opportunities, yeah, to dip in and do a deeper dive on some random topics that we think are important for that moment. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I the family meeting every, every July or June mm -hmm. is going to be a great way to, we're going to interact and have some fun. And I hope that there are more opportunities for us to do that. As as the pastors here, I was I'm sitting on my phone. People watching on. They're like, why is Brett just texting tuned over there? out? Oh yeah, I was texting. No, you're trying to get more votes about how good of a host he is. <laughs> I was <laughs> the, doing a little Twitter. You thought poll, I was good, like, right? Am I better or Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Twitter poll. Yeah, two people answered. Um, no, um, I, what I was going to ask is is maybe there's a person on the other side of this microphone who's listening. It's like, oh man, I really enjoyed this, and mm -hmm. and uh, maybe they don't listen to a ton of podcasts or something. The question that comes up in my mind is, is, is there content like the deeper dive that we could recommend to people? I don't know. Do you, you guys listen to podcasts, right? Other, mm -hmm. other podcasts. Is there, is there something that we could point people to that we get encouraged by? Maybe it's not in the same lane completely as deeper dive. That's why I was on other my phone. than anchor daily, other than anchor daily. Yeah. So uh, this is a non podcast. And I'm just going to plug it because just shamelessly plug it. Like the Bethel Institute is a great way. If you want to dig deeper into mm -hmm. theological, biblical content and hear it taught by some of our pastors and elders and other lay leaders, like that, that's a great way to do that. We've got a class coming up here starting in a few weeks called Christian beliefs. And we've got a May master coming up. That's going to have, I think four to six classes trying to hit different topics. I know that in Prosser you've had couple of your elders or Tim Oten has taught at least a class and your hope is to teach more. So that, uh, yeah, he's teaching another one starting in two weeks yeah. Christian beliefs uh, no it's biblical sexuality oh and oh interesting yeah, yeah. so I mean yeah there, there's gonna be content outside of Sunday morning and anchor daily through the Bethel Institute um, but man a podcast what, what are you listening well, you to you know what well, 
Go ahead. Okay, I was going to say, one of the ones, uh, it's been a while since I've listened to it, but at a Western seminary, there's a podcast called Food mm-hmm. Trucks in Babylon. Yeah. And I think Babylon is like Portland. <laughs> This is probably pretty true, yeah. but Todd Miles and oh, I forgot the guy he was with ended up going to another seminary. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but they usually address some really relevant questions. I mean, seriously, all the way from should Christians smoke marijuana? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's one of the things that Todd Miles yeah. has, he's, he's, he's written on and stuff, uh, homosexuality and yeah. these sorts of things, yeah, but ra- just, racism and things like, yeah, kind of some, some yeah, they address yeah. both the hot topics and then also just like theological topics Mm -hmm. and so anyway i would man if you want to you want to listen to that one i i really like those guys todd's funny too he just by the way todd miles professor todd miles he's a he's a bethel guy homegrown boy right yeah he's a homegrown he's one of us man Mm. good great guy just turn him up over there in western so yeah preston preston sprinkle with theology in the raw is along the same lines yeah he's put out hundreds of episodes at this point i think okay that say say that name again is his name is preston sprinkle but the name of the podcast is theology in the raw okay very similar content to Tom Miles and just through his own lens. Okay. Well, here's what I was going to say. If you like the content like this, where we're going deeper into the message and that's mm-hmm. what you like, like guys, we preach expository. Go look up sermons mm. on the same message and like that'll give you a different angle, a yeah. different pastor's perspective, which is a lot of what happens in the room right here. And so if that's yeah. the piece that you like, um, find some preachers that mm. also preach expository that are good, solid orthodox christians and enjoy it right mm-hmm. like and and see what's said differently in the same and how it's communicated and that's going to increase your learning okay yeah for sure well let me let's go into our, just kind of the last part here um so we are pretty upbeat even though we're we're very upbeat even though we're ending a deeper dive we're like hey is this a strategy we use as a tactic no we'll probably go on to something else we're all still here we're all still involved um this is a question of we've kind of looked at over the years but and just kind of brought it up but how do you guys feel about the future of bethel church right now adam's not going to speak first because he's like really want to hear from you guys yeah. i've got my thoughts he's going to save his for like the the mic drop at yeah. The end. yeah right exactly we'll get this thing off uh if i had to uh, if, I, if i could bet on bethel i would i'd put money on it that that uh um, it is it is going up and to the right, and I I don't mean that it's like a financial term, but it's like I mean I mean that in like kingdom sense. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I think that I uh, yeah I've just I've op- I'm optimistic for what is going to happen in in our future. I think, and not just with Bethel, I would say kind of churches across America. I think I am optimistic about how how church is is changing in our country. Mm. Um, but I'm very optimistic about Bethel. I'll give you, I mean, yeah. I'll, you want more? I want more. <laughs> Can I have more? Give me more. <laughs> um, I think, I think there has been a, a clarity of vision and whenever the reality is church has changed, not just for us, but for many churches in America were, were uh, maybe on the edge of a recession. Uh, maybe not. But either way, it's this year is going to be difficult, right? Uh, Any time there is massive change like that, and, and especially coming out of something like COVID that has just completely changed how we do life, mm-hmm. what what naturally you can you can do one of two things: you can either not change as an organization, and then suffer the consequences of everything else changing around you, or you can take stock of what needs to change and make some, make some difficult decisions. Um, but maybe good decisions. And part of that is, uh, it's just a clarifying of vision. And I think that is what we are experiencing here. So why I'm optimistic is because I think that we are saying yes to the right things and no to the wrong things, if that makes sense, or no to the things we need to say no to and yes mm-hmm. to the things we need to say yes to. And that is coming not just with Adam, that's coming with uh, the elders and the strategy team and the executive team and everybody that is that is looking down down the future and saying, hey, where, where, what does Bethel need to be majoring in? Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm optimistic. <clears throat> um, and we have leaned into, as a church, we have leaned into the changes that need to happen. And believe me, there are churches that are not leaning into those changes because they're, mm-hmm. they're grasping hard onto the things. This is how we do church and this is, and, and we're not going to change. Well, yeah. you might survive, but 
everything else is going to change around you. And that means, yeah, yeah, you might not be around for those changes. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Matthew? Uh, you know, you, I, question, by the way, the question was, how do you feel about the future of Bethel? Yeah. So, uh, I was talking to a staff member literally this morning and he said, you know what? I think Bethel's best days are ahead of it. Mm-hmm. I think I know who said that. I'll bet you can guess. Or that person said that too? Because uh, it's been it's been it's been tossed around. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, I think the best days are ahead now. I mean, yeah, like I said, things are going to change and they might look different. Mm-hmm. And but like I think that that kingdom value, like when we keep that at the heart, we keep the gospel at the heart. Best days are always ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's going to look the way we always want it to look. Um, but that is always the best is when we're pursuing Jesus and we're standing around the gospel and like, man, that's here. That's mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And I'll just say for me per, too, like just personally, like, man, I love being here. I haven't, haven't quite been on staff for a year yet. It was, I came on staff last March. Okay. Getting close. Getting close. The one year anniversary is closing in. Hmm. Um, I expect lots of presents. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> one year Financial anniversary. bonus. <laughs> but whatever, whatever you might be, you know, whatever that is. Um, <laughs> man, I just love coming here. Mm-hmm. I love coming to work. I love my commute and just the smile on my face being like, man, mm-hmm. I love getting to do what I get to do, serving the kingdom and love doing it with people that I enjoy being around. Yeah. And like the staff here, like it's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's great people, great friendships and a lot of great things that happen behind the scenes that people don't see. Talk about mic drop right there, man. Yeah, that was good. We could stop there. Drop it. I thought that's what we're saving years for. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll save you for the end. I'll jump in just last Sunday. I think I was sharing this with you guys earlier, but uh, last Sunday I was before the uh, run through. I was just, kind of roaming around like I usually do. I was kicking around, drinking a coffee. <laughs> and uh, two people came up to me on two different occasions, just unsolicited, I was shooting the breeze with them. And both of them basically said the same thing. They want to communicate to me. They said, look, I, I, we just feel really good about where Bethel's at right now. We feel like, like what, uh, what, what are they saying? Like a future is bright, hmm. that sort of thing. Unsolicited, I wasn't, they weren't trying to just pump me up. They were just, they were just sharing it out of like, like the overflow of their heart, right? The joy that they had. Well, you guys just heard our final episode of The Deep, Deeper Dive. Uh, we have completed 100 episodes, which is just amazing. We didn't know it was going to go on for this long. Um, you know, I thank the guys, the other pastors, for being such a big part of this. And one of the things I would like to communicate to you is that our relationships, what you've seen here on the deep, or heard here on The Deeper Dive, this is true. It's one of the great things about our pastoral team. Just we get along really well. We work together really well. Uh, the guys accept me <laughs> being the older guy. And so this, what, what you've seen here is not, I mean, it's not a show. It's, it really is just a reflection of the reality. Um, the other thing I'd like to do is just thank you guys. Thank you for those of you who have um, commented to us how much The Deeper Dive has helped you how, you, how much you enjoy listening to it, and how much you've learned about your pastors by listening to this, by listening to this program. It's, it is kind of a unique view into the lives of our, our spiritual leaders. Um, okay, since I'm on kind of a thank you thing, I'd also like to just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for using Jason for this idea that we took and took it out of the clouds and implemented it. The Lord brought people like Andrew and others to make it happen. It really was a team effort. But thank you guys for listening. If you would like to get a hold of us and uh, if you want to tell us anything, you can tell us at church. Um, if you have any ideas for us in the future, we'd like to hear that too. Well, thank you. I hope this has been as much of a fun ride for you as it has been for us. May the Lord bless Bethel. (laughs) Probably uh, not the best time to bring that up at this point, is it? (laughs) My bad.